Hello again, this is Alex with MassageAstrading.com and this is Market Recap for Friday, March 16, 2018. So, uh, pretty similar as uh, before presentation, uh, we'll look at stocks, uh, some pockets of strength, there are some pockets of weakness, uh, we'll look at bonds and treasuries which are bouncing and this is helping certain interest rate sensitive sectors, we'll look at uh, the dollar which I think could be set for a rally actually and in fact has been rallying versus Canadian, Australian and New Zealand dollars. Gold related assets are under pressure as dollar firms. Uh, we'll look at oil and energy as uh, energy stocks kind of move lower while oil um, is trying to go higher and uh, copper could be at resistance. Look at natural gas and finally we'll finish with cryptocurrencies, which I think are just beginning their um, bear markets. Right, let's look at the futures of S&P 500. This is ES one exclamation point on Trading View. So, uh, throughout this presentation, I will be using uh, Trading View interface mostly. Uh, if you don't have TradingView interface, uh, you can just go to TradingView.com, sign up for free. There is no need to pay for their accounts. Uh, if you're interested, you could get these lines on your TradingView chart. Uh, these are my calculated uh, indicators, and you can get them uh, by signing up at MasterChartsTrading.com. So throughout the presentation, I will refer to these four lines the green, the blue, the red, and the yellow. And these are support resistance lines um, that are calculated using my indicators. So here on this chart of S&P 500 futures, we could see um, support and resistance. So here uh, on 26th and 27th of February, you can see clear resistance at this green line and then the price is sold off towards uh, support around this blue line. Now again you can see we have a rally and now we are potentially, I don't know yet if we're stolen here at resistance. Uh, generally speaking stocks and this particular chart S&P 500 uh, and various uh, diversified indices are in a bull market. So again I would not contemplate shorting uh, major indices anytime soon. Here's QQQ and I keep saying the same thing uh, if you listen to my previous videos uh, that basically it is very difficult to find the top and in a bullish security and this is a bullish security. How do I know it's a bullish security? Because it's been hitting fresh highs and additionally since I'm using uh, my indicators we have closed above um, this blue line and we have not yet closed below this yellow line. For, for stocks I give the benefit of a doubt to the bulls uh, because generally speaking stocks are uh, you know good um, you know overall they tend to go up uh, over time. Therefore if or when we sell off significantly and begin trading and begin making lower lows and lower highs below this yellow and red lines, I would be um, worried about it, so to speak, and that would be the indication that we have a bear market. But currently we don't. And here's QQQ uh, f hitting fresh high. This is a NASDAQ 100 ETF hitting fresh highs here on the 13th of this month, 2018, March 2018. So Overall, this is a clearly a bullish chart. Uh, we simply look for buying opportunities, and of late, uh, as I get older, I, uh, you know, as I was when I was <laughs> slightly younger and less experienced, um, I was looking for, you know, just get into pretty much any trade, especially if it's a very volatile or quick moving stock, uh, trying to get in around this green line and just try to push higher. Of late I kind of been looking for deeper pullbacks towards the blue line and notice here uh, this is a very good support here um, that manifested itself in the beginning of February of this year. Notice that uh, QQQ bottomed out again uh, around this blue line and then rallied. So uh, looking like a 
clearly a bullish chart. Will this change? When will this change? Especially when will this change? Nobody knows. The trends can continue very um, long time and nobody really knows what's going to happen with this trend. Uh, what we are trying to do um, in a trend, tra trend trading and I am basically embodying trend trading at masterchestrading.com is that we are looking to jump on this trend and uh, you know continue riding it until it no longer is a trend. Yeah, so overall the stocks are in a bull market and I don't really question this uptrend yet. When we get to junk ones I will try to make a point that there is something to be concerned about. But for now, there are pockets of strength in the technology, industrial, and financial sector. So let's look at those sectors. Here's XLK, also on a daily time frame. Uh, very similar chart to QQQ. And it makes perfect sense because the composition, excuse me, is very similar to QQQ. So these are fresh highs here on the 13th of this month. Um, let me see. Technology industrials. I have a position open in industrials. XLI opened it recently here on the 5th of March at 7575. Um, my style of trading calls for relatively quick uh, taking of the profits and moving of my, especially moving of my stop to entry. Uh, and so this is exactly what I did. I entered here at 75.75. Um, you see, like right there. My uh, trade went in my favor. I sold half here and I moved my stop to entry. Uh, my position is still open, but you can see that it could be easily stopped out. Your mileage will obviously vary because, you know, there's a million ways to trade this uh, chart. But overall, this is a bullish chart. Uh, you know, there are highs here at uh, the 29th of January, and we're very close to fresh highs. Another one is, of course, financials. XLF also trading very close to fresh highs. Now, financials include mostly banks and some, uh, you know, service. Uh, related services, not not um, real estate investment trusts. They have been separated into their own se sector, and I'll get to real estate later on. So overall, uh, the important thing here is XLF, uh, XLI, um, XLK, uh, big sectors, big major sectors of the uh, stock market are in an uptrend and they are bullish and they're hitting fresh highs. So they are also leading the market higher. So overall, this is a good sign for the market when offensive sectors such as technology is leading the market higher. Okay, so let's look at some of the other sectors which are under pretty severe pressure. So utilities... XLU, um, these are fresh lows here, and here I sent to my subscribers to avoid utilities. Um, I'm avoiding myself. Now, anything is possible in the stock market, but I wouldn't want to touch utilities currently on the long side. I, wanna, I don't want to be buying it yet. Um, I would want to be buying utilities if or when we uh, currently get up to this level of 53 bucks or so. Um, but for now, I think the utilities could continue to be under pressure and maybe actually start making lower lows and lower highs. Here's IYR. And uh, if you're a subscriber, you will know that I actually opened a short here, um, IYR, on the 15th and I opened it via DRV. So here's DRV, which is an inverse ETF. Now, it, it looks, what happened is on uh, 15th of this month, the candlestick on real estate, IYR, right there where the arrow is, 
looked a lot worse. In fact, around uh, 11 o'clock California time in California, uh, this candlestick looked very bad. You know, it looks like it's going to close below this red line. So I'm like, oh, great. I'm going to go ahead and open a short here. But notice that what happened throughout uh, closer to the close of the day on Thursday, you can see that it, we had a rally. And actually the close was above the green line. You can see there was one, two, three, and now on Friday here, we had a, a fourth touch of this line, a nice big surge. So I'm actually reconsidering my short in uh, real estate, unless we quickly uh, roll over here. So I may need to close it, uh, but my stop is not far off. So the risk here is relatively low. So overall, I think, why am I even thinking about shorting this particular uh, stock, uh, stock fund is because uh, I think this stock fund is in a bear market. You can see here on the uh, 12th of January 2018, uh, we had a close below this yellow line. To me, this is pretty unequivocal um, bear market sign. And notice that we had very nice opportunities here to short at the uh, red line. So now we have a, a similar type of bounce and I wonder if we're going to roll over and continue lower from here. The opposite is always possible and that's why we always have stops and that's why we always calculate the position size and uh, if you're interested in how to calculate the position size I can explain it. Uh, send me a, a message. Preferred stocks also EGX here. Big bounce but Maybe maybe we'll continue higher. I mean, if we close above this blue line, I, I'll reconsider my uh, bearish posture on PGX. PFF, also a preferred stock portfolio. You know, it's possible. Maybe we'll continue higher. Um, currently, I'm avoiding uh, preferred stocks. And another sector which is really surprisingly weak is uh, XLP consumer staples, uh, strong selling here back on in February, I uh, told, I, I sent my subscribers a cautionary note here to avoid it. I had a position open, I closed it uh, with a profit, uh, position was opened, let me see where it was opened, back in uh, October of 2017, it's a nice gain here, but uh, it got sold really hard, so I went ahead and I closed it at a profit. But overall, this is a surprisingly bearish chart. Notice that we had a close below this uh, yellow support line. And again, on Friday here, another close below this yellow support line. So I think we could continue lower uh, from this. Um, yeah, this is just a really surprisingly weak chart. And uh, let me see what else I wanted to cover here. Okay, so that's it for stocks. Overall, I, I still think that we are in a bull market. And, um, you know, basically of late we had quite a bit of volatility, which could continue. Um, but overall, I would not short this chart. I would only look for buying opportunities uh, for the major indices and for uh, index, index futures. Okay, let's continue to bonds. So first, let's look at junk bonds. Um, the low-grade bonds are correlate highly to the general stock market. In other words, if stocks go up, um, junk bonds usually go up with them. Vice versa, if junk bonds go down, stocks also, generally speaking, go down with them. So. This is my major concern on this chart. This is JNK in a daily time frame. You see we can we closed below the support line um, on the 2nd of February of this year, 2018. Continued lower, big big move lower. Uh, now we had a oversold bounce. Uh, I said it was a dead cat bounce. Yes, it definitely was a dead cat bounce because this was already a this would have been a profitable trade should you, you know, if you desire to short it, short it here. Um, currently, I wonder if we're already done with this bounce. 
maybe we'll continue lower. So overall, junk bonds, hmm, since they correlate highly to the general market, I wonder again if perhaps junk bonds are sounding an alarm on the stock market. And we, we're now having, you know, uh, several uh, stock sectors, for example, XLP is outright bearish, uh, XLU, outright bearish, IYR, real estate, uh, also outright bearish. So several stock sectors, you know, admittedly not very important ones, you know, staples are about 10% of the stock market and utilities and real estate are even less, but overall it is a concern. And also energy, add-in energy, so you have maybe 15, 20% of the overall stock market in the bear market. So can the stock market continue higher with such parameters? It's possible. And perhaps the um, junk bonds and real estate and utilities will eventually turn around too. We cannot exclude the possibility. But we should also keep an open mind to the possibility that right now we may be experiencing a beginning of a bear market in stocks. Only uh, future will tell and this will be only visible in rear view mirror. Let's look at the investment grade bonds. Here's TLT 20 plus year treasury bond fund, uh, most volatile and most um, um, kind of like a most secure investment you can think about because these are longest uh, United States government bonds and they're usually, well, there was no precedent in history when, in modern history, when they did not get paid. Uh, so overall, this is a bear, bearish chart as well. Notice we had a close below this yellow line, so yellow support lines, uh, notice fresh lows here, and now we've seen a bounce. How far this bounce will carry uh, this particular fund, it it would make sense for it to get up as high as like 121.41. Um, maybe higher, um, I don't know, but I would not look to buy this fund. I would look to only sell it, to short it. So if I was going to short it, I would probably short it at the, at the red line at 121 or so. Uh, but with the... You know, treasuries, we're seeing a bounce in interest rate sensitive stocks such as utilities. So it, it is making, uh, it makes perfect sense. So TLT overall in a, is in a bear market. I, I actually have no bonds in my cur currently in my uh, overall portfolios, in the retirement portfolios. Uh, I only have about 50% stocks, but again, your mileage will vary because your age and your financial position situation. So here um, we can look at the aggregate bond fund, which is, uh, you know, all or most of the United States uh, bond market. Here's AGG on a daily time frame. Again, a break below this uh, yellow support line. I sent an alert to my subscribers to avoid it. Um, LQD, this is an investment grade corporate, also breaking below this yellow line, so definitely in a bear market. A bounce is possible, but I think this bounce should be shorted, actually. So uh, overall, uh, I would say that bonds are still in a bear market, and this could influence uh, the stock market, and especially uh, the junk bonds, uh, the low, uh, the high high yield bond funds, if they roll over further, this could really put pressure on the stocks. Okay, let's continue to the Forex universe. Here's dollar index on a daily time frame. So, here we see that bear market for the dollar is still alive and well. Um, I I do see some bottoming, possible bottoming signs. Uh, you can see that recent short, if you shorted it uh, on the 1st of March, if you shorted DXY on the 1st of March, probably would have worked in your favor. You could have made a little bit of money here and maybe stop, got stopped out already. Um, I feel like dollar could bounce higher and 
maybe towards uh, 93 level, you can see that um, several currencies have been, um, a dollar has been actually gaining versus several currencies. Here is US dollar versus Canadian dollar in a daily time frame. You can see a big rally here, uh, you know, above this red line and towards this blue line. So I think if we close above this blue line, we could see a, another, you know, breakout higher for the Canadian dollar, uh, for the United States dollar versus Canadian dollar. So in other words, the US dollar will be winning this um, battle. Some of the other commodity heavy Forex um, uh, uh, currencies are Australian dollar versus United States dollar. So you can see big selling here. And um, again, I wonder if we're seeing a beginning of a reversal for uh, this particular security, Australian dollar versus US dollar. So again, if I see a close below this um, 70, 0 0.76 line, then I would say that the dollar, Australian dollar has uh, reversed versus the US dollar. New Zealand dollar here, NZD, USD, same thing, big selling here. And again, I wonder if we're going to see a reversal versus the major ones, Euro versus US dollar. Um, here we can still see that Euro is uh, in an uptrend, but I feel like it's kind of losing steam and I think maybe we'll see you know a, a move lower for this pair uh, but overall I would still buy euro especially if we get to like uh, this blue line 1.181 1 or so and like at attempt to bottom here maybe uh, we'll look for a buying opportunity same goes for British pound GB, uh, GBP USD you know a little bit weaker than euro so again let's look for possibly a buying opportunity around 1.36 so again overall uh, dxy maybe is in a, is ready for a significant rally versus um, other currencies All right let's continue to gold uh, gold on a daily time frame this is Paper gold XAU USD as traded on Forex. Still in an uptrend. I once we get, you know, I'll, I'll show GDX or gold miners. They concern me greatly because they diverged from gold significantly, and now with the possibility of a rally, significant rally in the dollar um, that is possibly brewing right now. Um, I think gold. Um, could come under severe pressure honestly here's gold futures on a daily time frame still a bullish chart but again i i worry about the gold miners and here are the gold miners so here's gdx on a daily time frame you notice that the chart is completely different whereas gold was trading up here or above this blue line GDX, the gold miners, are actually trading below this yellow line. So this is outright bearish to me, and I'm simply avoiding GDX currently. Um, maybe it will rally, but I, I, I don't like this chart, you know. So I'm, I'm avoiding it for now. So here's GDXJ, similar pattern, also trading below this yellow and red lines. And notice here, uh, a few weeks ago, I sent or I published this um, chart and on the 6th of March you can see there was a touch of this red line and actually you could have made money here already uh, you know a short trade but it's it could have worked you can do um, inverse of uh, gold miners uh, junior gold miners so G dust GDS team so Overall, I'm not really loving this gold patterns um, lately, so I'm I'm kind of avoiding gold for now, and um, we'll see where this goes. Basically, all right. Next on the agenda is oil and energy, and again, 
as I just showed, so here's for example GDX. You can see that the gold miners are trading lower, and here are, is the gold itself. Uh, here's GLD. Notice that it's trading above this blue line. So who is right? And the same thing kind of goes for current situation with oil. So here's oil on a daily time frame. And notice that oil is trading you know, above this green line, kind of approaching this green line, definitely above the blue line, so definitely in a bull market. And um, Versus the energy ETF, which is XLE, and you can see the pattern is significantly different. You can see that it is it's sold off really hard, it's trading below this red line, touch the, touch the support line around um, 64.50 here, and kind of really wanting to go lower, I think, from here. So I am concerned about this divergence because um, I wonder who is correct. Maybe the energy stocks are going to lead oil lower. Vice versa, maybe oil will continue higher and energy stocks will turn around and also continue higher. So for example, here's ExxonMobil, XOM. <clears throat> Again, outright bearish. Um, as early as the 7th of February, I was already uh, warning my subscribers to avoid it. Notice here on the 27th of February, there was a touch of this uh, yellow, uh, uh, red uh, support resistance line and then a nice big selling. So you could have shorted it already here. So overall, I am again concerned about energy uh, diverging from oil. So we'll see again who is correct, which one is correct. Natural gas, uh, briefly, uh, not much has changed really, but if you're an aggressive trader, then potentially already shorted at the yellow line. Uh, if you're a more conservative trader, I would I would short it around $2.95. Um, or simply avoid it, I mean, if you don't really uh, you know, this is a very, a very wild security. You can see big swings, so you could easily lose money uh, on this particular one because people use, you know, U gas and D gas, and it's just uh, this thing is wild. Um, copper futures. You can actually trade it also as JJC. Copper futures uh, concerned here is that we're stolen at stolen here at the highs. Uh, here on this chart, you can see a green support resistance line on the 6th of March of this year. You can see a touch of this green support resistance line. Another touch here on the 14th of March. So perhaps we're seeing resistance here. Um, Perhaps not. Uh, overall, I think this is still a bullish chart, and I not I wouldn't short it just yet. But if we start selling off, then um, we'll need to watch for a break below this uh, uh, red resistance support resistance line. And if we do the if it does break down, then we could see a more significant move lower. Finally, let's look at uh, cryptocurrencies. So here is BTC USD live chart because it's being traded as we speak, it's 24 hours a day. So overall, I still think that uh, Bitcoin is in a bear market and I still, I, I, I think it started, uh, the bear market started here on February 4th of this year, 2018. So. If you shorted it here on this breakdown, you would have already made some money. Depending on where your stop is, and I personally like to use wider stops, so I would have put my stop above this blue line. So you need to calculate your position, and this is pretty wild because the, you know it's a very expensive um, security. You need to have a relatively large account to trade this. But overall, I still think that this is a bearish chart. And here on the 14th of um, March 2018, I, I see another break below this uh, red support resistance line. And so far, I still don't see any, um, you know, I don't see any uh, rally. So 
I see resistance here on the 16th of uh, March. Let me zoom in for you there. And notice that we basically touched this line right there at 8600 bucks, and this is Bitfinex. So maybe we'll take another leg down. And here's Litecoin, LTC, USD. Another uh, bearish security. Uh, to me, a breakdown occurred on the 1st of February 2018. Beautiful opportunity to short here on the 20th at this blue line. And by the way, these lines are available at masterchestrading.com. I think we could continue easily down towards possibly the yellow line, which is currently at 89 bucks. Uh, which would make uh, for a very nice drop of, uh, you know, 43%. Ethereum, ETH, USD. Think of cryptocurrencies not, in the, not as an investment vehicle, but as a trading, as another trading vehicle. Um, and here, Ethereum, ETH, USD, you can see um, another support break or the A support break below this red line, we could again see a nice big move lower for Ethereum. And finally, here's XRP USD. Same thing. Um, well, let me find a different XRP USD from Bitstamp. It has a little bit more data. So uh, the breakdown on this particular instrument occurred on the 16th of March 2018, right there, when it was a close below the red line, you can see that you can basically short anywhere and then a nice move down, 51% move if you shorted, shorted it back there. Currently we're approaching again this yellow line, so potentially we could, could again short it maybe on breakdown below the yellow line too. Um, so overall, um, pretty much all, um, pretty much all cryptocurrencies, I think, are currently in the bear market. Okay, um, that's it for this week's recap. Uh, please head over to mastershastrading.com, click on alerts and indicators here, and then sign up for free trial for 30 days. Uh, you can get, I'm going to tell you how to get my indicators. I'm going to send you alerts, obviously, about uh, various uh, markets that I trade. And I usually trade equities, gold, um, bonds, and to a lesser extent, commodities as of late. That's it for this week's recap. Thanks for watching and have another great trading week. Bye-bye.